live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. A home invasion and shooting ends with the death of a 14 year old boy overnight. Details coming up. And as family members bury their loved ones in Uvalde, the demand for answers on the police response to the shooting remains under extreme scrutiny. Outside with live cam, new month, old weather. Mike Osterhage is standing by with an update on our midweek forecast. And a good morning to you. It is Wednesday. June 1st. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, old weather. <laughs> exactly. Let's, let's talk to Mike, see how humid and how hot it will be later on today. And uh, yes, sir. We have subtle little S subtle little little, little changes, minuscule, minuscule changes, but we'll take anything. <laughs> yes. And yes. yeah, so if temperatures are down a couple of notches, we'll uh, later on this afternoon, not this morning. It's the same uh, story we've had yesterday as well as the previous morning going back in toward the weekend. There's all of our morning clouds hanging around here. We do have a couple of more streamer showers, just all the, the moisture kind of pumping on in here in the flow from the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, a couple of them are out there in portions of the hill country. Just a little bit of light rain. It's not going to be anything of a whole lot of consequence. It's if anything, it's just going to make the roads kind of damp at places, maybe a little bit of free uh, lawn watering. And then we've got a, a few more and even a couple of decent showers here right around Hallettsville. Everything, of course, sliding up to the north to uh, northwest. Nothing is showing up in and around town right now, but there may be a couple of those uh, light little sprinkles, even some mist, which is too light to be picked up on radar. So could have some damp streets. It's going to be the I think when it's all said and done, what we get from this this morning, 78 degrees, almost identical as far as temperatures to yesterday, mid upper 70s around here. Of course, plenty of humidity still, and it's going to be greeting you as you walk out the front door. Heat index readings add about uh, two, three, four degrees to the current temperature, and that's what it feels like. Mold yesterday was on the low side. Throughout the rest of today, we are going to have more clouds hanging around here. Obviously some sunshine thrown in and a couple of these little showers here and there. And then I think this afternoon, a couple more just going to be popping up here and there. Don't get really excited about rain chances, but at least there is that small chance for a few uh, showers. Still wind out of the uh, south southeast on the breezy side. About the same situation the next couple of days. One or two showers here and there. I'm going to stop there for right now because you don't want to see what's going on in the weekend. Details in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Mike, thank you very much. New this morning, San Antonio police say a 14 year old boy is dead following a shooting late last night. It happened just before 10 p.m. in the 100 block of Agnes, just north of Hildebrand on the north side. SAPD says the teen was shot and killed in a home invasion situation. Police say they do have a suspect uh, information or they do have suspect information, but are not releasing it at this time. Right now, investigators are questioning a witness to the crime. SAPD is still trying to figure out all the details that led up to the shooting. And this morning, the grieving continues in Uvalde, where families are now holding funeral services for those 21 students, 21 and staff killed in last week's school shooting. As loved ones mourn, there are reports that Uvalde police are no longer cooperating with the state investigation into the law enforcement response at Robb Elementary. At Uvalde Sacred Heart Catholic Church, a final farewell for 10 year old Amory Jo Garza. A part of Uvalde and her is just gone from my heart. It just feels horrible. Garza and 10 year old Maite Rodriguez were laid to rest Tuesday. Father Eduardo Morales is presiding over at least 12 funerals for victims of the Rob Elementary shootings. Although I have celebrated many funeral masses, this certainly is the situation is different. It's as if one huge funeral that is not in funeral after funeral as new details emerge in the tragic timeline that's brought you valley to its knees the texas department of public safety confirming a rob elementary teacher re-entered the building after seeing the suspect crash his truck before the shooting and called 911 her lawyer telling the san antonio express news she saw the armed suspect went back inside the school and closed the door adding she thought the door would lock because the door is always supposed to be locked this as state officials say you valley schools police chief pete arredondo is no longer cooperating with its investigators after his initial interview. Law enforcement sources say Uvalde police and Uvalde schools police are also not complying, but the state later released a statement saying both agencies have been cooperating. Several law enforcement sources tell ABC News Arredondo's refusal comes after the director of the DPS called Uvalde police's delayed response the wrong decision. Arredondo reportedly ordered tactical teams to not go into a classroom, wrongly believing there was a barricaded subject, not an active shooter. Meanwhile, Congress is now reviewing gun reform measures. 
All eyes are now on the ongoing bipartisan Senate talks that are focused on advancing gun safety legislation. Well, in your other morning headlines, the price of oil is increasing around the globe. Brent crude oil closed at its highest level in nearly three months yesterday at $122.84 a barrel. This comes after the European Union reached a deal to ban 90% of its Russian oil imports by the end of the year. Experts predict this will cause gas prices in the U.S. to inch even higher. According to AAA, the national price for regular gas is at $4.62 a gallon. That's up more than 50% from just one year ago. The U.S. Supreme Court has temporarily blocked a Texas law restricting the ability of social media platforms to moderate user-generated content. By a 5-4 to four vote, the justices granted an emergency request from the tech industry to block the measure opposed by Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. The order is a loss for Texas, which had argued its law prohibiting social media platforms from moderating posts does not violate the First Amendment. Opponents of the Texas law say it would compel platforms to distribute anything from Russian disinformation to neo-Nazi or KKK propaganda. A group of states led by Florida submitted a court filing supporting the Texas law in hopes of keeping conservative viewpoints from being banned on social media. The Supreme Court's action will allow the legal battle to continue in lower courts. A judge has denied Sarah Palin's bid for a new trial in her defamation case against the New York Times. A U.S. District Court judge ruled Palin's motion lacked merit and that she was unable to deliver admissible evidence to support her claim. Comes after Palin sued the Times and his former editorial page editor in 2017. It's after the publication erroneously said there was a clear link between a map with crosshairs over congressional districts and the shooting that gravely injured former Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords. A former Times editorial page editor testified that he added language about there being a clear link, but later worked to quickly issue a correction. Right now, 437, about 77 degrees. And still ahead, who doesn't enjoy a nice cookie or a cupcake right before bedtime? Why dietitians say you may want to try to change that habit sooner than later? And next, more speculation on where and when the Spurs will play their quote-unquote home games away next season. And a quick look at the roads at 437 in the morning. Things are looking pretty clear right now at I-10 and Callahan East. And outside with live cam, glad you're with us on this first day of the month of June. We'll be right back. Four forty, our San Antonio Spurs will play one of their home games this coming season in Mexico City against the Heat at a rematch of the 2013-2014 NBA Finals. That's according to Record, a Mexican-based site that says the game will be played December 17th at the Mexico City Arena. It comes after the Spurs originally requested to play as many as eight home games away from the AT&T Center. Of course, that caused concern among Spurs fans. The team was testing the waters about a possible move. But following an open letter by Spurs Sports and Entertainment Managing Partner Peter J. Holt, Bear County Commissioners granted the team four games away from the AT&T Center for this coming season. That will include one at the Alamo Dome as part of their 50th anniversary celebration and two in Austin. Meanwhile, the 2022 NBA Finals begin tomorrow night live on KSAT. Boston will be at Golden State starting at 8 p.m. Sunday, the game at Golden State will be at 7 o'clock. The series switches to Boston next Wednesday and Friday. For the fourth time in the last five years, Dehennis is playing in the UIL State Softball Semifinals at Red and Charlene McCombs Field in Austin. Yesterday faced Dodd City at a rematch of last year's title game. Cowgirl, Cowgirls on the board first, the bottom of the first. Reese Redden sends one deep to the gap at left. Ryan Major scores the opening run. DeHennis leads one nothing after one. Bottom of the fifth, bases loaded. Kayla Looper comes through with the base hit into left. Tony Burrell scores it to make 2-0. That ends up being your final. DeHennis wins it two nothing, and will play for the Class 1A state title. San Antonio Mission is taking on the Tulsa Drillers for the first time since 2018 last night. Folks out at the Wolf got to see a pitcher's duel for most of the night. Mission's got a single run in the second and two more in the eighth. Missions end up winning three to one. The series continues tonight. And that's morning sports. Good luck to the missions. Time now 442 and 77 degrees for now. And while it may seem harmless, a snack just before bedtime isn't good for your health. Coming up next, how to kick those cravings. The next why now is the time to book airfare if you plan to fly your vacation dest dest destination this summer.
And welcome back, it's 445. If you are planning to travel this summer and you haven't booked airfare yet, now is the time. ABC's Gio Benitez has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, get ready for the summer travel rush. With summer surging demand and fewer flights, in some cases, airfares are sore. Don't wait to book your flights until the very last minute because last minute flights are generally going to get more expensive, not less expensive. Karen Brennan says her family's most recent trip to California put them in debt. A flight for four to San Francisco for us would typically be about $1,600 and it was about $2,800. I had paid, you know, for the flights, I'd save for that, but then all the hotels and everything else that would normally be in our usual budget just added into it now. Experts say the most expensive weekend to fly, July 4th. There are still deals available for this summer, but you're going to have to be flexible. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have the expert tips you need to get the trip you want without breaking the bank. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. Shifting gears, are you a late night snacker? Maybe enjoy a nice cookie or a bowl of ice cream before bed? <laughs> Sounds good. You're not alone. However, all of those snacks before bed can affect your health. 12 on your size, Marilyn Moritz has some ways to change the habit. Rosemary Silva lost nearly 75 pounds. She ate full and healthy meals during the day and replaced nighttime snacks with water. It was hard for me to stop snacking. Mentally, I had to teach myself that no, you know, once you're done with dinner and then you're done to clean the kitchen and get out of the kitchen, there's no need for you to be in there. Studies suggest that nighttime eating can lead to higher cholesterol and blood glucose levels. If you find yourself standing in front of the fridge at night, Consumer Reports has some ways to ease out of the habit. Our body Bodies do certain things better at different times of the day. Like in the morning, it does a better job controlling your blood sugar after a meal than it would later in the day. A recent study showed that people who eat an early morning breakfast had better blood sugar control, which could reduce the risk of type 2 diabetes. And getting the majority of your calories during the day should help stave off night snacking. Keeping a journal of your nighttime nibbling can be an effective tool to help alter behaviors. A lack of sleep has been linked to overeating. Going to bed an hour earlier means you'll have more time to sleep and less time to snack. A higher protein diet has been linked to reduced hunger, so keep full with chicken, fish, or legumes for meals and protein-packed snacks like yogurt or nuts. Finally, keeping your hands busy, like folding laundry while you watch TV, can help keep you from snacking. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. And a quick look at the rose with Trans Guide. Let's look out there at I-10 and Callahan again. Okay, a few more vehicles on the roadways, but still no problems. Mike Osterhage is going to repackage a normal treat for us this time of year, and that is pretty typical weather, right? I'm still thinking about the little snacking. Does snacking. that include dessert after dinner? I mean, if yes. you eat it with dinner. Well, I think, well, maybe. Didn't you sure. talk about like middle of the night? I, I think know. it's more like for people who maybe have an early dinner and like right before bed have a and little, then, okay, and then like, like a yeah. candy bar or ice cream or something. Are you a pre-bed snacker? Because I know you go to bed at like 3.30 in the afternoon. <laughs> in fact, it could be, yeah, it's 7 o'clock and dinner, yeah, but anyway, so um, ice cream does something. Can you have ice cream in the morning if you handle blood sugar better? I think I, you're in a better position now. I but, think, I but, don't know. But perhaps we're overthinking it again. Yeah, True. I don't know. I, I was told like more calories in the morning so you can burn them off during the day, right? I guess. I don't know. Let's order a pizza. <laughs> we got lots of clouds hanging around here this morning, and uh, just like every other morning this week, it is very warm, very humid. We do have a couple of uh, of these, as we call them, sort of streamer showers, just all the humidity getting pumped on in here from the, the Gulf of Mexico. A few of them out in portions of the hill country. Again, this is not going to be any big deal as far as rain this morning. Just these uh, light little sprinkly showers. Couple more off to the east. Uh, some folks are lucky enough to get a, an okay shower here and there. They're moving along fairly, fairly well. And then uh, not really anything here in town right now. This is just some clutter around the radar site. Maybe a little bit of a sprinkle here or there. And, you know, there could be some mist that's too light to be picked up on radar as of right now. So we are going to keep the small chance for a stray shower around throughout the morning. Don't get your hopes up. Most of us won't see anything as far as any rain. Temperatures will stay in the mid and upper 70s around here. And again, it's just basically a 10% chance, which is almost nil. Then we see a little bit of sunshine thrown on in here, but I think we're going to lean more toward a few more clouds than what we've had the past couple of afternoons. And yes, that will keep temperatures down 
few degrees. Yesterday we hit 99, so 96 today, still six degrees, or excuse me, five degrees above normal, but at least it's down ever so slightly. And then again, a 10% chance for another shower. Even a stray thunderstorm is possible popping up later on this afternoon. But again, rain chances are, are not great at all. Here's the computer model, and it's got those couple of showers scattered about the area this morning, and that will continue on. A little bit of sunshine thrown on in here, and this is just, you know, scattered here and there at best a couple of them even in portions of the hill country and then later on this afternoon this has basically one shower and or a thunderstorm out there so that'll probably be you can probably count these on one hand later on this afternoon but at least there is that chance temperatures are down a couple of notches here and there so forecast today. Uh, it's going to be a lot like the past couple of days again, except for the fact a few more clouds hanging around here. Temperatures down one or two degrees. So instead of 90 at noon, we'll be at 88, mostly cloudy skies. And then we'll call it partly cloudy later on and 96, a stray shower or two here or there. Don't get too excited about rain chances. Then we go into the next few days and pretty much the same thing tomorrow as well as on Friday. Still going to be warm and humid in the morning. We stay in the uh, the mid 90s around here. Then we go on into the weekend. This is what I didn't want to show you earlier. <laughs> oh, this 98 part. Saturday, 100 Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Well, I mean, it's not exactly a shocker. We knew not it was really. going to return. I know, but. Yeah, hmm. but I know you just were trying to be nice about it's it. It's just seeing all those zeros on there. Sure. In, in, in a row. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> we appreciate your efforts to sugarcoat. Yeah. We do. Thank you, Mike. 451, about 77 degrees. And coming up next, why both Netflix and Disney Plus are now boasting their two newest shows are some of the best ever. Your lottery numbers this morning. Pick three, nine, two, six, fireball, two, daily, four, one, four, nine, four, fireball, four. Looking at cash five, three, 18, 26, 27, 28. And your Mega Millions, 6, 15, 41, 63, 64, Mega Ball 24, Mega Plier 4. Good luck. About five till the new Elvis movie debuts over in London, plus Obi-Wan and Stranger Things go head to head. Our latest on what's happening in Hollywood. Here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. There was a new king in London last night, the king of rock and roll. The upcoming film, Elvis, at its premiere after dazzling the Cannes Film Festival last week. Star Austin Butler says the film explores some of the issues that came alongside Elvis's fame. It's that thing when people say you're great, then if you feel really happy, or if they say you're awful, then you feel terrible. It's, it's kind of getting past and realizing that's not real. And, and trying to find ways of staying grounded through it all. Elvis is in theaters June 24th. Another exploration of famous musicians comes in the form of the new limited series, Pistol, that charts the rise and fall of the Sex Pistols and the punk rock scene that surrounded the British band. Danny Boyle directs, telling me it's a myth that the band had no musical training for the most part, but. More important than whether they could play or they couldn't play, whether they were qualified or not, was that they had something to say. And that's all you need. All, right. all episodes of Pistol are out now on Hulu. Two new shows setting records. Disney says Obi-Wan Kenobi on Disney Plus was the most watched series premiere ever. It's time. And Netflix says the new season of Stranger Things had its best debut ever for an English language show. Better than the previous champ, season two of Bridgerton. And she just co-hosted the Oscars. Comedian Amy Schumer turning 41 today. While he just had the biggest movie of the pandemic era, Spider-Man star Tom Holland is 26. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. 26, what a young pup. <laughs> Happy birthday, Tom. Yes. 456 right now, 77 degrees. And still ahead on GMS, they're going to have new details on how lawmakers plan to pass a package of bills aimed at limiting access to guns for Americans under the age of 21. Plus, Apple releasing a new update for iPhones. We'll tell you about changes you'll see ahead in Tech Bytes. And a quick look at the roads, the trans guy, that's not a real shot. There you go. That's the truth right there because it's 4.56 a.m. And that's a look at I-10 and Callahan. We'll be checking in with Stephen Cavazos very soon. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. More funerals today in Uvalde as new details are released in the school shooting investigation. And the debate over gun rights continues. Details on a bill that would raise the age to purchase a 
semi-automatic rifle. Back here at home outside with live cam. 77 degrees is about where we were yesterday morning with some morning clouds. And then that searing afternoon heat. Will we hit 100 in the next seven days? Mike will let you know. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday, June 1st. Thanks for joining us today. I'm hoping <coughs> at least for now, the cloud cover will help just a little bit. Yeah, because we know once the breaks in the clouds happen, Mike, it's just straight to broil, right? Basically, yes. Can I change that to not in the next uh, about four days? Okay. 100? Yeah. Of course, okay. if you're department, you're allowed to amend, uh, uh, amend whatever you want. Qualify that just, <laughs> just somewhat. Uh, we are, it's still very warm and humid this morning. We're at 78 degrees and that uh, bottom number, dew points at 72. That means there's a whole bunch of humidity out there. Wind is out of the southeast primarily at about 10 miles per hour. 96 for a high temperature today. We're still five above normal, down from yesterday's 99. Thanks in part to a couple of extra clouds hanging around here this afternoon. The aquifer yesterday's reading did drop down a ton, 1.7 feet. Still, of course, stage two water restrictions and mold is on the low side. We've got a couple of little sprinkly, uh, we call them streamer showers around being picked up on radar this morning. Hey, just because of all that flow coming in here and all the extra moisture from the Gulf of Mexico, that's why you see some of these little uh, sprinkly showers. Not much. We've got a few of them just scattered about from Rock Springs down toward uh, Lake. Uh, you Valley, one or two of them, and even a couple of them there in southern southeastern Medina County, and then off to the east, a couple of them as well. Even a, a decent shower here or there. Don't expect a, a whole lot of rain. These are just going to be uh, more nuisance showers, if anything, just kind of making the roads damp here and there. And then nothing is showing up in town as of right now. But uh, just be on the lookout for, again, a, a stray little shower here or there. Heat index values right now. So the thermometer is re reading is 78. We're at 80 as what it feels like when you step outside, which... Of course, it's just been greeted by that lovely humidity out there and throughout the rest of the morning, warm, humid again a stray shower or two. And then later on this afternoon, a few more clouds compared to the past couple of days. We will be in the like said, mid 90s as opposed to the upper 90s and then a shower or two later on today. Same thing tomorrow, same thing on uh, Friday with a stray shower to mid 90s. Then we go on into the weekend. And yep, we're going to be sizzling again. Looks like we got some triple digits later on in the forecast. Details in just a couple of minutes. Track authority, Mr. Cavazos, anything going on? Well, I've been taking your advice, Mike, trying to find that friend with a pull and no luck yet. But uh, I'll be hopefully, hopefully somebody's out there for us. But right now, traffic looks pretty decent and looks cool so far. So let's get a look at the roadways right now. 410 at San Pedro Avenue. You can see not a lot to talk about. So that's some good news for those drivers that have to head out the door in the next few minutes. Just some quiet roads. Roads, lots of pavement and lots of green on the screen. As you can see it there at 502, the metro area not showing any slowdowns just yet. But obviously we know that there is that endless road work that is continuing in our area. So we always want our drivers to be prepared. We'll talk about that a little bit later on, but nothing is going to really impede your morning commute. Uh, if your destination is the Alamo City, well, good news here is we are just about green across the board. Let's check out the journey from Bernie right now is a 25 minute drive time. We're looking at 27 minutes if you're heading in from Mulverde. So no need to hurry. A 26 minute drive time on I 35 southbound heading in from New Braunfels. So some good news as we start this Wednesday morning 35 at division again light traffic. But as I mentioned, some construction spots to be on the lookout for. We'll have that coming up in the next few minutes. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. Today there will be more funerals for some of the victims in Uvalde. And Sarah Costa joins us in the studio with the details. Hey, good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Mark and staff in the community of Uvalde standing together stronger than ever at this time as they prepare to say their final goodbyes to the lives lost in the Robb Elementary School shooting. The first of those funerals and visitations began yesterday, starting with 10-year-old Amory Joe Garza and Maitha Rodriguez. Today, three funerals are scheduled, two for the victims in that school shooting, a mass will be held for 10 year old Jose Flores Jr. There will also be a mass for fourth grade teacher Irma Garcia. Her husband died just days later of what family says from grief. His services are also being held today. And we're also following new details this morning as the active shooter message sent to parents is further muddling law enforcement's timeline of the shooting. Our defenders got new audio that's now raising new questions about law enforcement's response to the shooting. In a phone message received by parents at 12.20 p.m. the day of the shooting shows district officials were calling it an active shooter incident.
The 45 second message acknowledged an active shooter was at the school and told parents to stay away from the campus. But late last week, DPS said at that time, law enforcement officers gathered inside the school and continued to hang back and not engage the shooter. That's despite repeated calls to 911 from people inside the building, including children in classrooms. Now, according to the timeline, officers did not breach the classroom and engaged the suspect until a full half hour after the active shooter message was sent out to parents. You can read more about what our defenders have found. That's on ksat.com. Just look for the story on the homepage. Mark and Steph. Thank you, Sarah. Funerals are expected to take place over the next two weeks. You can find information on those as well as visitations and memorials on ksat.com. We're also continuing our efforts to highlight the victims on our social media platforms. We've been sharing a photo and information about each victim given to us by their loved ones every hour uh, on the 21. And rural school districts are looking for ways to fund additional security for schools. Medina County Commissioners will hear a request this week from representatives in the six school districts seeking money to hire school resource officers. Natalia, ISD board president, says he is also considering arming staff through the Guardian program. However, he wants to get some feedback from the community first. Since 2018, Nixon Smiley CISD has had confidential armed staff members protecting their schools. They're being trained specifically for uh, the active shooter situation. Nixon Smiley spends about $35,000 a year on the entire program, which includes training. And last month, Lavernia ISD board leaders approved the use of the Guardian program. The district is already in the process of interviewing people who want to be a part of that program. Gun reform talks resume today with a bipartisan group of senators hoping to reach a compromise by next week. The changes under consideration include expanded background checks and red flag laws to take away guns from people deemed dangerous. ABC's Andrew Dembert has more. This morning, as the victims in the Texas school shooting are laid to rest, President Biden is promising to meet with Congress on guns. I've been to more mass shooting aftermaths than I think any president of American history, unfortunately. And it's, uh, it's just so much of it is much of it is preventable. On Tuesday, the president meeting with New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern, praising her success in passing a ban on military-style semi-automatic weapons after a white supremacist killed 51 Muslim worshipers in 2019. The White House says the president would support similar legislation. He supports a ban on sale of assault weapons and high-capacity magazines. But the administration acknowledges passing any new gun legislation would be an uphill battle. On Tuesday, a bipartisan meeting of senators led by Democrats Chris Murphy and Republican John Cornyn to discuss gun reform. My plan is to get a bill, a comprehensive bill, that will save lives. Opponents argue gun restrictions do not work. The problem is mental illness and school safety. Meanwhile, lawmakers in the House plan to vote as early as tomorrow on a package of bills known as the Protecting Our Kids Act. The bill would include laws to raise the age to purchase a semi-automatic center fire rifle from 18 to 21, make it illegal to possess a large capacity magazine with few exceptions, and establish requirements regulating the storage of firearms. And while gun legislation stalls in Washington, local leaders are voicing their outrage. I'm mad about it. I'm fed up. And uh, I concur with many of our citizens here and across this country that enough is enough and this issue of gun violence has to be addressed. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Time now 508 about 77 degrees. And still ahead we'll tell you about Apple's newest update for iPhones and what changes you can expect to your messages and health apps. Up next how the city of San Antonio is preparing to celebrate the 75th anniversary of the United States Air Force. Taking a look outside with Lycan. Enjoy the 77 degrees. Even though it's humid out there, it's going to get warmer later this afternoon. We'll be right back. 512, welcome back. Over on the west side, you drive along West Military and Highway 90. You might see something new flying in the sky. Specifically, there are new banners marking the 75th anniversary of the U.S. Air Force. More than 160 banners were just installed by the city of San Antonio's Military and Veterans Affairs Department. The Air Force was officially founded on September 18, 1947. Organizers are planning for more events and displays to mark the historic milestone. 
because they're a part of our community. They're here, they support, they're always there for us when we need us. And this is a big celebration, 75 years, and I thought that we needed something to showcase and to continue showing that we support our military and that we truly are more than just a tagline. We really are Military City USA. Some banners will also be on display out at Randolph Air Force Base. And time now is 513 and 77 degrees for now. Still had TikTok testing a new clear mode for its app. We'll tell you how that works. Also next, Stranger Things breaks a big record for Netflix. Was there something missing in my life till now? What's missing? An absence I could not quite place but knew somehow. And then this vegan bakery came sliding down my screen. Yo. And ever don't repair a pair that tightened up my seams. Tight. While I'm my chez routine. Remix French tips and squid cuisine. We're down. Endless, lit, infinite possibilities. I'm down. A world where personalized ads help good ideas get found. I've traveled every road in this here land. I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere, man. I've traveled, I've had my share, man. I've been everywhere. 516, a lot of changes coming to iPhone and iPad with the latest Apple software release. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, Apple's new software updates. iOS 16 will include updates to notifications, messages, and the Health app, according to Bloomberg. The software is also said to include new multitasking panels for iPads. It's all expected to be released at Apple's conference next week. TikTok is testing a new feature that removes buttons from the screen when scrolling through videos. It's called Clear Mode, and it makes it easy for content creators and other users to screenshot clips without the clutter of usernames, caption, and other information. And a binging record on Netflix. Fans of Stranger Things 4 set a new mark watching nearly 287 million hours of the show's new season over the weekend. That's the most viewing for one season of a show in a single week. Stranger Things is a must watch. I give it an 11 out of 10. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. 517. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavasso. So last I saw, Loop 410 had some flashing lights there. Yeah, uh, thankfully these are not flashing lights that we need to be concerned about, but of course we want our drivers to remain alert. Let's go ahead and get a wider look at Transguide. Uh, there's some barrier work that's been taking place there. It began overnight around 9 in the evening, should be wrapping up at 5 in the morning, or should have already wrapped up, but obviously crews are still out there as we can see from this shot at Transguide. Vehicles are able to make their way through there near the west side of San Antonio without any trouble, but as always, remember that there are several active construction spots taking place in our viewing area, as you can see right here on our map. Now, it's still very early, so we're not seeing any slowdowns due to this construction. But as I mentioned, this will continue throughout the day. Uh, this is going to take place a little bit over here off I-35 northeast side of San Antonio, how to jump past those inbound times. But uh, some drilling work will actually take place. Keep in mind, this is current, but we'll be wrapping up on Friday, June 1st. Crews will be out there from 9 in the morning to 5 in the afternoon. During that time, you can expect a single lane closure on the northbound frontage road. That's from Foreign Parkway to form access. So of course, make sure to plan your commute and make sure to grab your phones, open your camera app, scan that QR code by tapping the center of your phone. That's going to take you directly to the KSAT traffic page. And if you've been with us, you know that we'll have the latest on all the construction spots that are taking place in your area and anything else that could impact your drive time. Just remember to scroll to the bottom of the screen. Guys, thank you, Stephen. Thank you. And a reminder that's hot out there, cactus yeah. <laughs> behind you. <laughs> I mean, there are folks that love the hot, humid weather, <clears throat> and there are plants that love it too. And I think this is it. So, <laughs> the cactus. And yeah, beautiful cactus in bloom. That is absolutely gorgeous out there. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. All right. We. We've got a lot of clouds around this morning. Same thing we had yesterday, same thing the day before. Plenty of humidity and very warm temperatures. Now, a little bit different, though, is the fact that we do have some of these streamer showers out there. 
Don't get really excited about this rain. This is only a nuisance rain at best, or I shouldn't this nuisance on the road. Uh, some folks may get a little bit of free lawn watering this morning, but it's not going to turn out to be anything overly substantial around here. Just a few of these scattered light little showers here and there in parts of the hill country and a couple of them off to the east, even a, a few decent showers. Some of those yellow spots moving up uh, toward Hallettsville, Victoria, you had one or two of them crossing over I 10. So if you're heading out 10, you may run into a couple of those sprinkles and here in town, maybe a couple of these uh, little sprinkles are starting to show up. So all this is really going to do is make the roads kind of damp if indeed we do get some. So the past couple of days we've had a lot of uh, yeah, obviously a few clouds left over here, but then a lot of those blue skies up above those clouds as they sort of broke up. Now today I think we keep more clouds around and one of the reasons is we have more moisture aloft in the atmosphere. This is the air that we had yesterday, which this darker shade indicated much drier air upstairs in the atmosphere. Now we've got more of this moisture aloft, so that's going to help to shave a few degrees off the the temperatures when you have a couple more clouds obviously out there and temperatures this morning, we will stay pretty steady, maybe fluctuate a degree or two like the last few mornings and then that 10% chance for a stray little streamer shower around here this morning. Some sunshine thrown in again. I think we keep more clouds around today as opposed to the past couple of days. We will still make it up into the low to mid 90s. So we'll still be on the above normal side, but instead of 99 like yesterday, we will be at 96 for a high temperature five above normal down a couple of degrees though, and then one or two more of these showers. Even a stray thunderstorm is possible popping up later on this afternoon. Not very likely, but just one or two of them out there. Computer model again, just a couple of these little scattered showers around this morning, and that's going to be the case on into the later morning hours approaching noon and early afternoon. Uh, again, one or two popping up later on this afternoon. I think you're going to be able to count these things on one hand. That'll be about the uh, the extent of it as far as any more rain later on and then satellite picture right now. There's all the low clouds hanging around here. There is somewhat of a front up to the north of us, and that's what's been producing way up there in the uh, Great Lakes area. Some of the uh, severe weather, but on the tail end of this, this is going to sort of sag down and just be in the vicinity the next couple of days, so that will help keep at least a very small chance of a couple of showers around tomorrow as well as on Friday. 88 degrees today at noon, mostly cloudy skies. So we've got a couple of these little light sprinkly showers scattered here or there this morning and then one or two of them later on this afternoon. Just a stray shower or two, 96 for a high temperature. Wind is going to be breezy again today. Then tomorrow and Friday about the same situation. We'll stay right around mid 90s. A couple of showers, some streamer showers in the morning, one or two of them in the afternoon, even a thunderstorm or two, a stray one here or there. And then heat gets cranked up. 98 Saturday, 100s again. We're looking at for Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. It, it, it makes me smile that you have to steal yourself a bit to, to deliver that yes. news. <laughs> And uh, okay, and that, that's it happened. 522, 77 degrees. And coming up next in your morning spotlight, an actress from West Side Story and a cast in Hunger Games prequel. Plus, look at some Obi Wan lightsaber secrets. 525, a prequel to the Hunger Games is in the works. Plus, a star from Obi Wan talks about her lightsaber. You're CNN's David Daniel with today's Hollywood Minute. Rachel Zegler is going from West Side Story to The Hunger Games. She's been cast as the female lead in the prequel, The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Zegler will play Lucy Gray Baird, a District 12 tribute who unites with a young Coriolanus Snow to try to survive. Sophia Reyes joins Train for the band's latest music video, Cleopatra. The song's retro sound is mirrored by the 70s-inspired video. Train launches its AM Gold Tour June 8th in Mansfield, Massachusetts. I want every lowlife and bounty hunter to squeeze him. Obi-Wan Kenobi cast member Moses Ingram got one of the special perks of joining the Star Wars universe. My lightsaber did have a design that was special for my character, but as we work through, you know, um, it goes through different uh, sizing where they make it fit my hands for me. So the ones that are scanned are particular to my hands. You can't escape him! In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel.
527 now 77 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA and it's inflation continues. We're going to tell you about President Biden's latest proposals aimed at boosting the economy. Plus, first look at a new tool that can help cut down on response time and confusion during active shooter situations. Plus, some major retailers are giving an update on the shortage of baby formula in stores. And ahead on GMSA at 6, our great grad series takes us to the Hill Country this morning. We're introducing you to a young woman from Bernie High School walking the stage with a pretty impressive resume. Making headlines this morning, the Biden White House calls fighting inflation a priority and what that means for everyday consumers. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, starting humid. You'll feel it once you open the door and things are expected to warm up towards the end of the week. And we've jumped right into midweek. It is Wednesday, June 1st. Good morning to you and thanks for joining us here on GMSA. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Hope you had a good week so far. Uh, it's been a hot one, definitely. Par for the course around here, Mike Osterhage. Well, way above par, kind of like my golf game. We've been averaging the past couple of days anywhere from, say, 5 to 10 degrees above normal. Today, temperatures are going to be trimmed down just a little bit. Still on the warm side compared to where we should be, the average, but at least we're going to be down a couple of more notches. There's all the clouds we have this morning, and uh, we've got temperatures that are, well, we're, once again, we're still 5 to 10 degrees above normal for low temperatures. We should be right around 71 degrees for an average, but we're at 77. That number dew point, a lot of moisture in the atmosphere, wind out of the southeast at 13 miles per hour. Again, it's going to be somewhat on the, the breezy side today. Here's a few of these streamer showers. There, Yesterday, there were just a couple of them over here, well uh, off to the east along the coastal plain. And now, as you can see, we do have a, a few more, a couple of them in portions of the hill country. Unfortunately, this is not a whole lot of rain. It's going to make the roads damp in places. Um, yeah, a little bit of free lawn watering. That'll be about the extent of it, I think, other than making things kind of damp. And just a few of these off to the east as well. Perhaps one or two of them are trying to move into a town over there by 90 uh, in portions of Medina County. Just a few of these light little sprinkles. So again, they're not going to amount to too much this morning, but just that little bit of uh, perhaps a damp spot on the road. Mold is on the low side. Of course, the updated count is going to be coming out later on this morning. Temperatures today, we are going to be 88 at noon. So we're down just a couple of notches from where we were yesterday. 80, 96, pardon me. Uh, for a high temperature later on today. So we have a couple of showers around this morning, one or two of them, slight break in any action that does pop up, and then one or two of them later on this afternoon, just to probably count them on, on one hand as far as how many showers are going to be out there, but at least we have one or two of them. Same thing the next couple of days. Weekend forecast is coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority. What's going on, Stephen? Hey, good morning, Mike. Well, good news here for our friends out at 410 State Highway 151. Those flashing lights where we saw that barrier work that was taking place. Looks like they're getting ready to wrap up. You can see those crews out there on the trans guide camera right now. So uh, again, great news for anybody that has to travel through this area on the west side of San Antonio. So you can see right now vehicles making their way through there. Just remember, give them plenty of room. They're working to improve the roadways. So let's give them a break. Let's go ahead and talk about what we're seeing on the map because thankfully not a lot to talk about here, but uh, what we'll continue to talk about are some of those construction spots as the morning does continue, but always make sure you keep your eyes on the roadway and make sure that you give yourself plenty of time. If your destination is the San Antonio area, well, these inbound times look like you're, they're in great shape for you. Pretty green from Seguin on I-10 westbound coming into the downtown area. We're looking at 22 minutes if you're heading in from 87 and Lavernia and 27 minutes coming in from Floresville. So our friends down there don't have anything to worry about. Just remember to be safe out on the roadways and again, 410 at State Highway 151 on the west side of San Antonio. It does look like those crews just wrapped up. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, a gun and a teenager somehow have added up to deadly violence inside a home on the north side of town. San Antonio police are still trying to figure out exactly what happened there. They found the teen inside a home in the 100 block of Agnes Drive off of North Main late last night. Katrina Weber is north of downtown with a live report. And Katrina, have police arrested anyone? Well, that is still unclear. A couple of officers have mentioned having someone in custody, but they were a bit reluctant to give a whole lot of information at this case. And what we do know is that police were called to the home in the 100 block of Agnes Drive shortly after 930 last night. They told us they found a 14 year old boy inside a home there dead from a gunshot wound. Now, one sergeant at the scene mentioned that this may be related to a home invasion. However, a public information officer later said that they don't know how or why that team was shot. 
Well, they did mention that we should check a little bit later on this morning and get a copy of their uh, report. However, uh, we plan to do that a little bit later on. But for now, we don't have a whole lot of information. We will update this story as soon as the information is released. Reporting live near downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. Now to Uvalde, where Governor Greg Abbott issued a disaster declaration following the mass shooting. Sarah Costa joins us in the studio with the details. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Mark and Steph. A lot of resources going to mental health. The governor's office says the declaration would accelerate state and local resources to help people in that community. In a statement, Abbott said the community of Uvalde has been left devastated by last week's senseless act of violence at Robb Elementary School and should not have to encounter any difficulty in receiving the support needed to heal. The declaration will suspend regulations that would prevent, hinder, or delay necessary action. It will help state agencies provide a temporary facility to be used as a family resource center for the Uvalde community members seeking mental health services as well as other resources. Now, people in Uvalde who need state mental health services can get help by calling that hotline, that number on your screen right now, 888 690 0799. That number and is available 24 7. Mark and Steph. Thank you, Sarah. Meanwhile, support for you for for you Valley is coming in from all over the country. Businesses in North Carolina raising money for the victims of the shooting Two ice cream shops have pledged all the money made for Memorial Day sales donated to an online fundraiser. Victims First is an organization set up by surviving victims and supporters of mass casualties. Right now, it has a GoFundMe page for those impacted by the shooting. A shop owner says he wanted to give something to the victims, even though labor and food shortages have put a dent in his shop's profits. The donation will be added to the more than $5 million raised for survivors and the victims' families so far. This morning, President Biden has launched a month-long effort to increase focus on the struggling economy. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, the move comes as many Americans are facing higher costs for most items ranging from food to fuel. The Biden White House says fighting inflation is a top priority. We can do that from a position of economic strength because of the historic recovery that we have seen. Strongest job market rebound in modern history. Most small businesses created ever during a recovery. In his op-ed for the Wall Street Journal this week, President Joe Biden listed numerous proposals aimed at boosting the U.S. economy, which include improving infrastructure and lowering the cost of child and elder care. The good news is that some of them we can do directly with our executive authority. But some of those presidential plans will need congressional support, and that could be an uphill battle. We are going to have to squeeze this inflation down, get past the problem, frankly, created by this all-democratic government insisting on dumping $2 trillion on the economy. And as the 2022 midterm elections loom, Americans are struggling with price hikes. Everything costs more. You didn't need me to tell you that. Especially when it's time to fill up. We have a GMC Terrain, a Honda, and I haven't even filled up my Ford truck since the prices have gone up so much because I'm just afraid to see what it's gonna be. It's gonna be the day that we're gonna have to walk everywhere. I'm John Lawrence reporting. 538, about 76 degrees. And still ahead, what some of the major retailers are now saying about baby formula shortages in stores. And next, details on new resource being made available to schools, churches, and businesses that can cut down on confusion during active shooter situations. And taking a look outside with a live cam, expecting another hot day today. However, we'll have some cloud cover, so maybe that'll help just a little bit. We'll be right back. 541 San Antonio police now training with a new tool for responding to active shooter situations. It's an app that schools, churches and businesses can use and claims to be able to cut down on response time and help manage the confusion at the scene. Garrett Bernjen shows us how it works. Three, two, one. In an active shooter scenario, every second counts. This may shave two, three minutes off of response time. And imagine how many people somebody could kill in one, two, three minutes. SAPD's SWAT team gathered at a church in Northwest Bear County to try out LifeSpot. LifeSpot CEO, a former Denver SWAT officer, 
says the app will put the user who sounds the alarm directly into contact with 911 while also notifying police officers with the app and every user at that location. And it sends an alert uh, to everyone that needs to know, once again, in less than six seconds. After that alert goes out, app users can mark off if they're injured, if they were able to get out, or if they're hunkering down. And they can provide information on the shooter directly to 911 or police. The idea being the info would get through more easily than it would in a flood of 911 calls. We were getting reports of the shooters in the pre-K room. SAPD is getting the app for free, and they plan to move forward with it, though just with SWAT for now. But any schools, businesses, or churches that would actually put it into use would have to pay to subscribe. Depends on how many users. We're anywhere from 30 cents a user per month to a couple bucks. San Antonio Police Chief William McManus says this was set up before the school shooting in Uvalde. And at first blush, says it seems like a good app for police or a venue to have. Does it come at a, at a, at a time when... Uh, it seems like it would be even more valuable. I guess the question, the answer to that question would be yes. Chief McManus says it's probably a discussion to have with SWAT commanders before they decide whether to put this on every SAPD officer's phones. And he also wants to talk with them before making any recommendation for schools or businesses to go ahead and get the app. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. 543, 76 degrees. Coming up next, a pet. Standing by with the Animal Defense League this morning, ready to go to a new home. And we're back with Kim from the Humane Society, and you've got a cute little kitten with you. Tell us about it. This is sweet little Frances. Uh, she is about three months old. So she came into us. She just got out of our foster family. So she's ready to be adopted. Um, she's $70. So it is kitten season, Justin. We have kittens everywhere. So come and adopt, give them a home. Yeah, you just m mentioned fostering too. How important is that? It is very important, especially for our littles um, and those that need a little extra care, our bottle fed babies. They're a little too young to go up into the shelter. So we need to give them some extra care. So we definitely need fosters as well. Okay, good information. And so what do you have, what do you have going on right now? So summer, it's summer, right? It is, Kids yeah. are out. So we have summer camp. Um, we have a really cool special for our first graders, like our littles, our first and second graders, and our high schoolers. So it's flash. You get 15% off our Memorial Day special. So go online to our website, sahumane.org slash education, and register for camp. It's going to be a blast, and they're going to learn so much. Oh, that's a perfect opportunity for yes. those kiddos that, you know, they don't need to be sitting at home. No, get them out. Get out. Do something. And you yeah. get to be around some fun cats, kittens, and Oh, babies. my daughters would love that. <laughs> I'm going to have to look at that. Yes. Yes. Them up. yes. And so tell me one more time. What, uh, what, what's the name here? Francis. Francis. Francis is ready to be adopted. She's beautiful. Check it out. You can uh, visit the website. What's the best way to contact? So go to our website, sahumane.org, or you can come by our location, 4804 Fredericksburg Road. We're open 12 to 7. Perfect. Thank you, Kim. Thank you. And in your morning consumer headlines, travel industry leaders are pressing the Biden administration to end testing requirements for vaccinated international travelers entering the U.S. Airlines for America and the U.S. Travel Association say the requirement is harming the economy and does not match the current threat from COVID-19. Among other things, they pointed out that restrictions on many other businesses have been lifted but remain in effect for travel. They also noted other countries with whom they compete have removed their pre-departure testing requirements and reopened their tourism economies. Several national retailers say the low supply baby formula remains unchanged at CVS. The shortage is still making it hard to keep formula product on the shelves. A company spokesperson says CVS is keeping its three product purchase limit in place as suppliers continue to struggle. Some supermarkets say it could be months before there's any change to supply on store levels, uh, store shelves rather. Other retailers like Kroger are still limiting purchases to four containers per customer. Let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos to see if there are any problems on the roadways. Well, it's been an easy morning for me, and it will be an easy drive for anybody that has to head out the door, at least for right now. Things are always subject to change as the morning does roll on, but let's get a look around town. There's 35 at Olympia. You can see it is starting to pick up there. 35 is one of the busiest uh, travel spots in town, so just remember, give yourself plenty of time if you have to head up to New Braunfels or maybe go up to Austin a little bit later this morning. But thankfully, uh, as we get a look around town, not really seeing any major 
major issues. Just a few more people getting their morning started. So as we talk about this, uh, it's kind of been a copy and paste situation. Nothing to really report here. Just those active construction spots. Here's another one that we have taking place off 281. We all know 281 is one of those uh, places where we encounter lots of work that's taking place. And just as a reminder, bridge work will continue. Now this uh, will start today, June 1st, and will continue up until Friday, June 3rd. Keep in mind, this is also overnight, so it'll start at 9 in the evening and continue up until 6 in the morning. So for you early bird commuters or you overnight commuters, this is for you. Expect that full closure of the Marshall Road intersection. But as of right now, things look to be moving quite smooth here in town. I 10 at Callahan. That's actually my travel spot. Had a nice drive to work this morning, and we hope that you have the same. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Caption contest for you. Aww, okay, ready? Caption this picture. Got it. Caption this picture. <laughs> I'm so happy <laughs> right see. now. <laughs> uh, hot dog, it's cool. Oh, I like that one. How about I, I found my friend with a pool? Ah, <laughs> there you go. I think Steven, you win. Uh, <laughs> spoiled rotten. Oh. <laughs> it's a dog's life. So cute. I like that one. Yeah. Scout's got the right idea for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Picture. Can we make Scout the morning show mascot? How cute. Yeah. I okay. Think, yeah. Okay. Does it come with the pool then? Uh, I sure hope so. <laughs> I think that's part of the deal. Yeah, and uh, Scott will uh, text you later on, Stephen, if you uh, want to go swimming with him. Lots of clouds hanging around here this morning, and we may see one or two little sprinkly showers. You may see one or two of them. We've got a few out there to the west, just some of these streamer showers. As you can see, there's not really a heck of a lot, just a couple little uh, specks that are showing up on radar. Same thing off to the east. It looked a slightly more impressive earlier this morning. These are even continuing to uh, work their way up well to the east of San Marcos. And then again, here in town, really haven't seen much. There's a couple of them over there right around 90 into portions of Medina County. This is all cluttered around the radar site, perhaps just one or two. But uh, that's about it. This is going to be just making the roads kind of damp. That would be roughly the extent of it throughout the rest of this morning. So temperatures, we are in the mid upper 70s. Stay pretty steady like the past couple of mornings, maybe a fluctuated degree or two. And there's that small 10% chance for one or two of these little streamer showers. We're going to make it up through the upper 70s and then get into the low to mid 80s by the latter part of the morning. Little sunshine moving on through here, but I think we're going to lean more toward having more clouds around throughout the rest of today as opposed to the past couple of days. We had a you know a fair amount even yesterday as well as on Monday, but few more around here, a little extra moisture even upstairs in the atmosphere. And then later on this afternoon, again, very small chance, 10% at best for one or two of these showers to pop back up primarily off to the east. And even a, a stray thunderstorm can't be ruled out, but I wouldn't really count on it. Don't get too excited about rain chances. We are going to top off at 96, so we'll still be five above normal today, but at least down a couple of degrees compared to yesterday's 99. There's those few showers that are popping up on the uh, computer model. Again, just one or two of them here or there around the area and perhaps a couple of more off to the east. And yeah, again, this is not anything to get really excited about. Unfortunately, the other well, kind of downside today. Yes, temperatures will be slightly lower than yesterday, but then again, the humidity, which drops down somewhat, is not going to be dropping down quite as much. So it's still going to be a pretty humid afternoon, and we'll have, uh, looks like, even more of a heat index to deal with than what we had the past couple of days. So temperatures down a little bit, but no matter how you slice it, it's still going to be pretty hot and humid out there. 88 at noon today, most of the cloudy skies and a high temperature makes it up to 96. Keep a few more clouds around one or two of those stray showers today. Again, count them on one hand. I think that's going to be the extent of it. Same thing tomorrow and Friday, you know, a stray shower, stray thunderstorm here or there, and then we get into the weekend and it's going to heat back up. So we are once again looking at some triple digit temperatures. Um, well, a few folks will see them on Saturday, of course, and then Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and throughout a uh, maybe even a good chunk of next week too, as it's looking right now, it's just going to be a hot week. It, it, the pain, the look on your face is, is like almost <laughs> painful. He's it's wincing just, just a bit. Just the I just think about, I mean, you know, and electric bills keep going up and mm. yeah, it's just, it's tough to be outside in that. So lots okay. of shade, lots of water. I'm, I'm scared to see that next bill. Is it going to be double or triple? Mm. Uh, hopefully just double. Hopefully. <laughs> 553, about 76 degrees. Let's look at your winning lotto numbers. Pick three, nine, two, six, fireball two, daily four, one, four, nine, four, fireball four. Cash five numbers, three, 18, 26, 27, 28. 
and Mega Million 615, 41, 63, 64, Mega Ball 24, Mega Plier 4. Good morning, we're live in Palm Beach County, Florida, and coming up on GMA, new details on the deadly school shooting rampage investigation. What authorities are now saying about the door the gunman used to get into that elementary school. Plus, what airfares are soaring this summer? The best times to book travel and the simple tricks that can save you money. And of course, we are live in London, less than 24 hours until the Queen's Jubilee with unprecedented access behind the scenes. And with very special message for the monarch, you'll only see right here on GMA. Coming up, stay with us. Thank you, Sam Champion. We'll head in our next hour. GMSA, very latest on an overnight shooting north of downtown that left a 14-year-old boy dead. And our coverage continues on the Robb Elementary School shooting in Uvalde. More funerals scheduled for today. Trans guide right now. Let's see how things are looking out there at just about 558. And uh, we're seeing some folks tap the brakes at 35 and FM 482. Traffic is looking great at 10 and Callahan. But I saw another backup out there. We'll talk to Stephen Cavazos coming up. A shooting at a home on the north side has left a teenager dead and police are trying to figure out why and how it happened. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have that story coming up. Although I have celebrated many funeral masses, this certainly is, the situation is different. It's as if one huge funeral that is not ending. As the community of Uvalde continues to mourn the 21 lives lost in a school shooting, families of the victims begin saying their final farewells. And in other news, you'll never guess how much this uh, copy of the first Harry Potter book is expected to sell for at auction. And taking a look outside with live cam, we're starting humid and things will heat up, but we're hoping the cloud cover will shave off just a few degrees this afternoon. Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you. We've made it to midweek. It is Wednesday, June 1st. And we made it to June, and it definitely feels like that. The, the weather is cooperating, I guess, with the time. <laughs> yes, the calendar and the forecast seem to match up. Mike says the trend of above normal temperatures rolls right into the new month, doesn't it? Yeah, so I mean, really, you know, I mean, think about the weather is not matching the calendar because even yesterday, you know, 99, that's even warmer than what it is in the first couple of weeks of August when because we should be at 91 right now mm -hmm. for a high temperature. Well, maybe Mother Nature will be generous to us in Later August on. and September, <laughs> right? For, for football season. <laughs> he laughs. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's go back to uh, today's weather. Yes, it is very warm and humid when you step outside this morning, and we have got a couple little sprinkly showers here and there. We had a few of these yesterday well off to the east, and now just a couple of more as we were expecting. Just these kind of call them streamer showers because of all the moisture that's basically just being pumped on in here, and the atmosphere kind of can't hold anymore and so we just have a few of these little uh, sprinkles out there portions of the hill country you're seeing a few of those you head out 90 you may run into one or two of them and then go east on 10 we had a few of those crossing over 10 right there around Nixon just one or two are popping up and uh, Castorville you may have a couple of these little sprinkles and then here in town, possibly on the uh, southeast side. It's not going to be anything substantial this morning. It's just going to if you get one of these showers, just kind of make road stamp. That'll be about the extent of it. Uh, mold is on the moderate, excuse me, on the low side from yesterday's reading. The update account comes out in a couple of hours and throughout the rest of the morning. Steady temperatures like we've had the past few days, and we'll see some sunshine trying to squeeze through by late this morning. But I do think we are going to be leaning more toward having more clouds around as compared to the past couple of days. That will, like Stephanie was alluding to, shave off just a couple of degrees here and there. So we'll be at 88 today at noon. We'll have a decent breeze out of the south to southeast, 10 to 20 miles per hour. Continues to pull in all that moisture around here. So what that means is with these partly cloudy skies, uh, one or two showers trying to pop up later on today, a high temperature of 96. So yes, that is still well above normal, but at least down from yesterday's 99. Couple of showers, don't get real excited about it, but a couple of them here and there in the next couple of days. Then we go into the first weekend of June. 
It's not going to feel like the first weekend of June. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, what's going on, Stephen? Hey, good morning, Mike. Well, we were keeping an eye on some slowdowns that Mark mentioned a little bit earlier in the newscast. You can see there, 35 at Division. It is starting to pick up as the morning does get going. Check out 35 at Olympia. Wow, that's just a lot of traffic at 6 a.m., but we know it's one of the busier spots because basically 35 serves as that gateway for people that are traveling into the Alamo City for work. So just keep that in mind. You're going to encounter some uh, traffic out there and slowdowns, but thankfully nothing major is really going to impact that early drive. However, as we inch closer and closer, you know the drill to that morning rush hour that will quickly change. Let's go ahead and start with a wide look at the map because although we did see a lot of uh, traffic out there, we see a lot of construction along 35 and you can see 1604, the usual uh, spots right there. So just prepare to see crews out there as the morning does continue, but also check your vehicles. As we bring you into 410, we have a stall right there off of the westbound lanes near Starcrest Drive. It's not been causing any issues because the morning is still young, but we know that people are getting their day started. So just make sure to move over or slow down anytime you see those flashing lights. Let's check those travel times if your destination is the Alamo City because it's still a pleasant drive coming in from 37 and Pleasanton with 28 minutes in the northbound lanes. Now Highway 90 in the eastbound lanes to get to West Loop 1604, you can expect about a 19 minute drive time. And right now heading in from 35 in Lytle in those northbound lanes, 17 minutes. So our travel times look good so far, but uh, traffic is starting to pick up back here in town. We'll continue to keep a close eye on things and have an update on some construction spots coming up in the next few minutes. Mark Stephanie. Stephen, thank you. The grieving continues in the city of Vivaldi, where families are now holding funeral services for the 21 students and staff killed in last week's mass shooting. 10 year old Amory Joe Garza and 10 year old Maite Rodriguez both laid to rest on Tuesday. Father Eduardo Morales presiding over at least a dozen funerals for victims of Rob Elementary. He says he's presided over many funeral masses, but this one is different in that, as you just heard, it feels like one large, never ending funeral. There are more to come over the next two weeks. You can find information on funerals as well as visitations and memorials on KSAT.com. We're also continuing our efforts to highlight the victims on our social media platforms. We've been sharing a photo and info about each victim given to us by their loved ones every hour at 21 minutes past the hour. The city of Uvalde canceled its official oath of office ceremony yesterday. However, Uvalde CISD Police Chief Pete Arandando was still sworn in as a new council member. He has faced criticism in the response to the Uvalde school shootings, and the Texas Department of Public Safety says he is no longer responding to their inquiries. Sarah Costa joins us live in the studio with the latest on what the agency is saying about him and what they are also clarifying about another incident in that shooting timeline, Sarah. Good morning, Mark and staff, and this comes as we learn the Texas Department of Public Safety has been trying to get a follow-up interview with Arredondo, but they say he hasn't responded in two days. The school district's police department and Uvalde police department have otherwise been cooperating with the investigation, according to DPS. Arredondo's refusal comes after the Texas Public Safety Department director called Uvalde's police delayed response the wrong decision. Eredondo reportedly ordered tactical teams to not go into a classroom. The agency saying wrongly believing there was a barricaded subject, not an active shooter. This is we learn DPS officials are walking back a statement they made Friday about a teacher propping open a door that the gunman entered through. DPS have now determined that the teacher who has not been identified propped the door open with a rock, but then removed the rock and closed the door when she realized there was a shooter on campus. The door that was designed to lock when shut did not lock. They're now looking into why that door did not lock. Now, investigators confirmed the detail through additional video footage that was reviewed since Friday's news conference when authorities first said the door had been left propped open. This story is constantly evolving. You can read the latest on KSAT.com. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you very much, Sarah. The gun control and reform debate has been reunited in the wake of the mass shooting in Uvalde. Just over a week after 21 people were shot inside the school by an 18 year old with an AR-15 style rifle, there are calls for a renewed assault weapons ban. The ban enacted in 1994 lasted through 2004 and it prohibited semi-automatic weapons from being manufactured or sold to civilians and banned magazines that held more than 10 rounds. John Taylor with UTSA said the chances of a similar ban being enacted today are slim. There are very few people on both sides at this point in Congress, the U.S. House especially, who are willing to engage in some sort of compromise. 
Taylor added the data isn't clear if the 94 assault weapons ban reduced the number of victims dying by those weapons. Uh, Taylor says future gun laws could depend on the outcome of the November election and who would control the House and Senate. And school safety is a huge topic being discussed right now. Many rural school districts are looking for ways to fund additional security. We are going to have more on this coming up in our next half hour of GMSA. And San Antonio homicide investigators are trying to figure out who shot and killed the teenager and why. Officers found the boy inside a home on the north side of town in the 100 block of Agnes Drive. Katrina Weber is live north of downtown with that story. We understand police have been speaking with witnesses. Are they getting any answers, Katrina? Well, what police told us early on is that those witnesses were not cooperating and that they were giving different stories about what happened. Now, it's possible that things have changed, though, as police continued their investigation. They first got the call about the shooting after 9.30 last night. Then officers found the 14-year-old boy dead from a gunshot wound inside that home in the 100 block of Agnes Drive. Police say that teen did not live there at that home but was visiting friends. That's where the information gets a bit muddled after that. One sergeant at the scene told us this could be related to a home invasion. Other scenarios they've told us included a possible drive-by shooting. And also when police spoke to us, they said they hadn't ruled out the idea that this could be self-inflicted. Now, we do expect that they will know a little bit more later on this morning, and we will update this story as soon as police offer us those, inf those details. Reporting live near downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Good morning, Consumer Headlines. Price of oil increasing around the globe. Brent crude is at its highest level in nearly three months yesterday, 122.84 a barrel. This comes after the EU reached a deal to ban 90% of its Russian oil by the end of the year. Europe is the biggest buyer of Russian energy, and now it comes with has to come up with an alternative. Experts predict this will cause gas prices in the U.S. to inch even higher. According to AAA, the national average for a gallon of regular unleaded is at four dollars sixty two cents a gallon. That is up more than 50 percent from a year ago. People buying homes in March are paying nearly 21 percent more than a year ago. Experts say it's the biggest surge in 35 years and rising interest rates will likely cut demand and slow down price increases later this year. President Biden spent part of Tuesday talking about the economy at the White House with Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell. The meeting comes just a couple of weeks after Powell was confirmed for a second term and ahead of what's expected to be more interest rate hikes through the rest of the year. And recent supply chain issues could hit some movie theaters right in the popcorn bucket. The Wall Street Journal said at a recent industry convention that there was talk about tight supplies of everything from popcorn itself to the bags and buckets used to hold it. 611 about 77 degrees. And much more to come on Good Morning San Antonio. Coming up a little later, our high school great grad series takes us to the Hill Country. We're going to introduce you to a young woman from Bernie High School. It has a pretty impressive resume. Plus, Apple's got some new features on the way for iPhone and iPad. We'll take a look at what you can expect. And have you been binging on new shows recently? Just ahead, we're going to tell you about the records. The new season of Stranger Things is breaking. And outside with live cam as we are beginning the month of June across South Texas. Glad you're with us on this Wednesday morning. We'll be right back. 615, welcome back. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cabasos. So uh, we've seen a little bit more activity out on the roadways right now, Mark. Steph, uh, 35 at Division, 35 at Olympia. It is getting busier. We're getting closer to that uh, morning rush hour. Just remember to give yourself time as you head out the door this morning. There's Loop 1604 right at Pat Booker Road and Loop 1604 at Kitty Hawk. So you can see people are getting their way out on the roadways and not having any trouble just yet. But uh, that's always subject to change. But one of the troubling things that we've seen are some of these stalls, 410 westbound at Starcrest Drive. We told you about this a little bit earlier. This was reported by TxDOT earlier in the morning, and we're still seeing it out there on our map. And it looks like we're adding another stall to our list over here on the south side at Loop 410 eastbound right there at Zazamora. Now, just a good indication here. Anytime you see that hazard on our map, that indicates that it is causing some sort of closure in the area. We'll look into it and find out how it's going to continue to impact the drive time. But let's go ahead and get a wide view of the map at 616. You can see no other problems to talk about. 
about just yet, but we'll continue to watch the road closely and of course always plan ahead because as a quick reminder, 35 on the northeast side, there will be some drilling work taking place. Now keep in mind this is current and we still have a few days to go Friday, June 3rd. It starts at 9 in the morning and should wrap around 5 in the afternoon, but of course we know that's a busy time, so just make sure give yourself some time. Single lane closure on the northbound frontage road at Forum Parkway to form access. And as a reminder, if you'd like to know what's happening in your area, open your camera app on your phone, scan that QR code by tapping the center of your screen. That's going to take you directly to the KSAC traffic page. And of course, that has the latest closures that are taking place in your area and anything else that could impact your drive time. Just remember, it's at the bottom of the screen. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. Prepare yes. for the heat. Pardon me? Prepare for the heat. Yes, prepare for the heat, and it's going to be sticking around. Even though we'll see uh, somewhat of a little bit of a break in the action today, I'm breaking the action by a couple of degrees as far as high temperatures. Uh, the hot, hot temperatures are looking like they're going to be sticking around even into next week. So, yeah, it's just one of those summers out there. 78 degrees right now. We are still seven above normal, and we're not going to drop down that much. Maybe a couple of notches here and there. And then look at the top number over there. 2.73. That actually went up a degree. That means even more moisture in the atmosphere. Wind out of the southeast at 8 miles per hour. As far as, well, darn, I had a pretty picture there. And, well, the Wi-Fi got me again. Anyway, 78 degrees here in town and 74 up the road in comfort. Mid and upper 70s all around the area. And, again, got a ton of humidity. Even Randolph now up to 75, 74 for dew point there at Seguin and 75 in Pleasanton. That's where it is basically just kind of wet towel sort of humidity when you step outside. So heat index readings 81 at the airport right now. Same thing at Pleasanton. And we've got a couple of little sprinkly showers. So with all this moisture that continues to get pumped in from the, the Gulf of Mexico, uh, they're yeah, scattered about far and wide, but not really obviously a heck of a lot of rain. Just a few of these little sprinkles here and there. That's pretty much I think what we're going to be seeing this morning is just basically sprinkles um, a decent little shower. Some of those yellow spots there, but don't count on a heck of a lot of rain. And if anything does fall, it's probably just going to be making roads kind of wet and doesn't look like there's anything here in town. This is a lot of ground clutter right there around the, the radar site, but we do have a few more of these showers that are coming in here to the east side of Bear County right there from Wilson County. Everything's sliding up to the north again. Not a lot, just a uh, just sort of that uh, inconvenient to uh, a couple of sprinkles out there. Temperatures will stay mid upper 70s throughout the rest of the morning. A couple of those sprinkly showers there. We'll start to see some sun peeking on through the clouds, but we are going to lean toward having more clouds around today than the past couple of days. A lot more moisture not only down here at the surface, but also upstairs in the atmosphere. We're going to make it up into the upper 80s at noon and then mid 90s down from yesterday's 99, 97 the day before. And we're only, you know, kind of splitting hairs here. A couple of degrees will take anything we can get. And then even a few showers. Uh, thunderstorm can't be ruled out later on this afternoon popping up around, but the kind of on one hand pretty much. Here's the computer model going through the morning. And again, those couple of scattered showers here and there, very few and far between. That's going to be the case going into the early afternoon and then sort of a, a lull. Then once things heat up again this afternoon, again, one or two of these showers around here. Not a much. It, it's more wishful thinking, I think, than anything, but there will be just one or two of them here and there. So the forecast today, we are going to be up to, again, 88 degrees at noon, partly mostly cloudy skies. Again, leaning more toward the cloudier side. A couple of these little showers here this morning, and then later on this afternoon, we're going to make it up to 96, a stray shower or two. Don't get, I think the best thing to take from the forecast is don't get really excited about rain chances. There will be one or two of them here or there. And that's going to be the case tomorrow as well as on Friday. Temperatures will stay mid 90s, so four or five degrees above normal. And then, you know, you take that knob on the stove and you go from medium high up to high. <laughs> that's what we're going to be doing this weekend. What if we unplug the oven? Yeah, let's, let's do that. <laughs> or turn off the gas. <laughs> that wouldn't be a bad idea. Yeah. Uh, that won't happen, unfortunately. No. Well, a man can dream, Mike Osterhage. That's true. Thank, you, ver through. Thank you very much. In today's Tech Bytes, Apple's new software update, iOS 16, will include updates to notifications, messages, and the health app, according to Bloomberg. The software is also said to include new multitasking panels for iPads. It's all expected to be released at Apple's conference next week. 
binging record on a binging record on Netflix. Fans of Stranger Things 4 set a new mark watching nearly 287 million hours of the show's new season over the weekend. That's the most viewing for one season of a show in a single week. A signed first edition of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone is going up for a private sale at Christie's in London next week. Now, the book is rare not only because it's a first edition, it includes several errors, including a misspelling of philosophers. This will start at 200,000 pounds or 250,000 U.S. dollars. Time right now, 621, about 77 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, the 75th anniversary of the U.S. Air Force is just around the corner, and there's a special celebration that's coming with it. Details ahead. <laughs> Was there something missing in my life till now? It's missing. An absence I could not quite place, but knew somehow. Right. And then this vegan bakery came sliding down my screen, yeah. and ever dumb repair appeared and tightened up my seat. Voila, my cher Rudy. Remix French tips and squid cuisine. Right now. Endless, lit, infinite possibilities. I'm down. A world where personalized ads help good ideas get found. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no worries. Oopsies. You go. No, you, you go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> go for the handful. I've traveled every road in this here land. I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere, man. I've traveled, I've had my share, man. I've been everywhere. Welcome back, 625. You drive along West Military at Highway 90. You might see something new in the sky. New banners marking the 75th anniversary of the U.S. Air Force, which will officially come this fall. More than 160 banners were just installed by the city of San Antonio's Military and Veterans Affairs Department. The Air Force officially founded September 18th, 1947. Organizers are planning more events and displays marking the historic milestone. Some banners will also be displayed out near and at Randolph Air Force Base. Coming up later today on GMSA 9, Katie Science Lab is on the road wrapping up the school year with some final experiments. So today, Katie and David Sears will be out at Cody Elementary on the far west side. They're going to be doing a project with a second grade class there, and you're not going to want to miss it. Stay with us. We're back after this. Homicide investigators are starting the morning with a mystery, trying to find out who shot a 14-year-old boy killing him. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have that story. A part of Uvalde and her is just gone from my heart. It just feels horrible. Family members of the victims of the Uvalde Elementary School mass shooting begin burying their loved ones. Outside with live cam, you saw Katrina had a hood on there. Mike says a sprinkle or two is possible this morning. We'll talk to him just moments away. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday, June 1st. Thanks for joining us this morning. Hope you had a good week so far. That's right. Let's talk to Mike right now about what's happening out there with the forecast this morning. You know, we've been showing radar all morning long and just a couple of these little, we call them little streamer showers, not really amounting to too much of anything. And yeah, with the Katrina with their hood up, I think we've yes. got a, a little bit of this and it's very, very light out there. It, at best is probably just going to make the roads damp if you do get one of these little sprinkles. Lots of clouds starting off this morning and boy temperatures are way up there. The average normal low temperature is 71. So we're at 78 right now and <laughs> That number is even higher than what it has been the past couple of days. We were in the upper 60s on Monday, the low 70s yesterday, and we've actually gone up a couple of notches with the dew point temperature, which means that much more moisture in the atmosphere. And it's just all this moisture that keeps getting pumped on in here. And that's why we're seeing some of these little sprinkly showers, just a couple of them here and there, parts of the hill country, one or two of them off to the east. Uh, if you're going out 10, you may run into just a, a couple of these, a few heading in toward well, maybe in towards Seguin and then here in town, just a couple of them are kind of sliding through the area right now. Again, all this is going to do is just make the roads sort of damp. I don't even know if it's can be considered just a, you know, nice little sprinkle on your lawn or not even free lawn watering, but just enough again to make the roads sort of damp. Mold is on the light side this morning and warm, humid couple of sprinkly showers this morning and then later on this afternoon more clouds than the past few days that's going to hold temperatures down just a degree or two and 
a few showers. That'll be about it. Maybe a thunderstorm here and there, but I really wouldn't get too excited about rain chances. Mid 90s, a stray shower tomorrow as well as on Friday. So at least there is that small chance out there. Then we go into the weekend and boy, the heat gets cranked back up. We're looking at more triple digits by the end of the weekend going into next week. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, what's going on, sir? Well, Mike, in just the last few moments, we saw some progress here along 35 near Business 35. Our friends at TransGuide giving us a different view here. Well, let's go ahead and get a wide look and show you the conditions out there. Again, this is up toward New Braunfels. You can see that traffic is moving through there without any trouble. But earlier, we did see some flashing lights. That's because a stalled vehicle was reported out there in the northbound lanes of I-35. Uh, our map is still detecting it a little bit closer closer toward Walnut Avenue, but we're not seeing those flashing lights, so we're going to clear that from our map a little bit later on. But some other things that we've been seeing clearing out as we take a drive back here into town are some of the stalled vehicles we showed you earlier. Loop 410 westbound there at Starcrest Drive has wrapped up too. Crews are working and they're busy helping out these drivers. Loop 410 eastbound at Zazamoto though. Unfortunately, we're still seeing that stall out there, so on the south side, just remember to move over, slow down anytime you see those flashing lights. Now, let's go in and get a wide view of the metro area at 6 32. No other problems to report just yet, but this is a time we know people are going to get out on the roadways. We can't expect morning rush to kick in here in the next few minutes, so just remember to be careful out there. If your destination is the Alamo City, we are just about green across the board, but the usual slowdown. Be patient for our friends up in Bulverde, a 29 minute drive time to the downtown area. But other than that, looks like we are seeing some smooth traffic here at 35. We'll continue to watch the roads closely, but as always, make sure you do the same. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. Well, three more people will be laid to rest today following the Valdi Elementary Massacre. A mass will be held for 10-year-old Jose Flores Jr. There will also be a mass for fourth grade teacher Irma Garcia. Her husband Joe just died two uh, days later after what family members say was grief. His services will be held on the same day. And there are more to come over the next two weeks. You can find this information on funerals as well as visitations and memorials on our website at KSET.com. We're also continuing our efforts to highlight the victims on our social media platforms. We have been sharing a photo and information about each victim given to us by their loved ones every hour at 21 minutes past the hour. School safety is a huge topic being discussed right now. Sarah Costa joins us live in the studio with a look at some school districts, what are they considering? Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. In the aftermath of the horrific shooting at Robb Elementary, our school districts are rediscussing ways to keep the students safe, starting with changes made to Southside ISD's graduation. Due to heightened security, no purses or backpacks are allowed on campuses for the remaining of the school year. Additionally, no purses or backpacks will be allowed inside the Alamo Dome on Thursday, June 2nd for the Southside ISD, for the Southside High School graduating class of 2022. Only students at Menchaca Early Childhood Center may use backpacks. Here is what is allowed in the Alamo Dome. You can see on your screens, purses, small purses, no bigger than five and a half by eight and, eight and a half inches, a clear 12 inch by 12 inch bag, a gallon plastic freezer bag, and medically necessary or diaper bags. Rural school districts are also looking for ways to fund additional security for schools. Medina County Commissioner will hear a request this week from representatives in the six school districts seeking money to hire school resource officers. Natalia ISD board president says he's also considering arming staff through the Guardian program, but he wants to get some feedback from the community first. Since 2018, Nixon Smiley CISD has confidential armed staff members protecting their schools. They're being trained specifically for uh, the active shooter situation. Nixon Smiley spends about $35,000 a year on the entire program, which includes training. Last month, Lavernia ISD boards leaders approved the use of the Guardian program. The district is already in the process of inter interviewing people who want to be part of that program. Meanwhile, gun reform talks resumed today with a bipartisan group of senators hoping to reach a compromise by next week. Some of the changes include expanded background checks and red flag laws to take away guns from people who are deemed dangerous. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has a story. This morning, as the victims in the Texas school shooting are laid to rest, President Biden is promising to meet with Congress on guns. I've been to more mass shooting aftermaths than I think any president of American history, unfortunately. And it's, uh, it's just so much of it is much of it is preventable. 
On Tuesday, the president meeting with New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern, praising her success in passing a ban on military-style semi-automatic weapons after a white supremacist killed 51 Muslim worshippers in 2019. The White House says the president would support similar legislation. He supports a ban on sale of assault weapons and high-capacity magazines. But the administration acknowledges passing any new gun legislation would be an uphill battle. On Tuesday, a bipartisan meeting of senators led by Democrats Chris Murphy and Republican John Cornyn to discuss gun reform. My plan is to get a bill, a comprehensive bill, that will save lives. Opponents argue gun restrictions do not work. The problem is mental illness and school safety. Meanwhile, lawmakers in the House plan to vote as early as tomorrow on a package of bills known as the Protecting Our Kids Act. The bill would include laws to raise the age to purchase a semi-automatic center fire rifle from 18 to 21, make it illegal to possess a large capacity magazine with few exceptions, and establish requirements regulating the storage of firearms. And while gun legislation stalls in Washington, local leaders are voicing their outrage. I'm mad about it. I'm fed up. And uh, I concur with many of our citizens here and across this country that enough is enough, and this issue of gun violence has to be addressed. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Governor Greg Abbott has issued a disaster declaration for Uvalde. The governor's office says the declaration will accelerate state and local resources to help people in that community. In a statement, Abbott said in part, the community should not have any trouble receiving the support needed to heal. The declaration will also suspend regulations that could hinder any necessary action and will help state agencies provide a temporary facility to be used as a family resource center in Uvalde. Trauma counselors are feeling a lot of pressure during this time. They care for the most traumatized people. However, they are also human beings. And we spoke to a counselor who helped in Sutherland Springs and is now helping in Uvalde. I cried a good bit this morning um, for these children and their families, and really and truly for our society and for the nation. It's hard to put into words. Ashley Jesse is a counseling supervisor at the Children's Bereavement Center in San Antonio, but she's also a mom, and as a member of South Texas, she says she is also grieving. It gave me some motivation to say, there's something I can do in this situation. I can help people, um, even though I'm having a hard time. She also says that exercising and spending time with family, friends, and pets is crucial to mending a broken heart, no matter who you are. If you live in your valley, there is help. You can reach out to the state mental health services hotline. That number is on your screen. It's open 24 7 one 690 0799 We also have this information available on ksat.com. And what began as a teen's friendly visit to a Northside home somehow has ended with his death. San Antonio police are trying to figure out what led to that. Officers found the teen dead from a gunshot wound inside that home in the 100 block of Agnes Drive. Katrina Weber live north of downtown with the story. And it sounds like police are having a bit of trouble with this investigation, Katrina. Yeah, it does sound that way. At the scene last night, officers told us that they were in the process of gathering up witnesses and attempting to talk to them. But then later on, we heard from them that they were having some difficulty, that those witnesses were being less than helpful. The police say that they have heard several different accounts of what happened at that home in the 100 block of Agnes Drive. A 14-year-old boy who police say was just visiting a friend there somehow died as the result of a gunshot wound. Officers told us this may have happened during a home invasion or a drive-by shooting or even could have been self-inflicted. The bottom line is they didn't know for sure because they say witnesses were either giving them no information or different stories. Now, we expect that investigators will have some more information a little bit later on today, and we will share that with you once they release it to us. Reporting live near downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you very much. 641, about 77 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, our high school great graduate series continues with a young woman from Bernie High School. Six forty-four on your Wednesday morning. Our high school great graduate series continues this morning. 
we are highlighting some of the outstanding students in and around San Antonio. And today we're introducing you to Guadalupe Barrera of Bernie High School. Steve Spreester tells us about the challenge Guadalupe overcame to find success. Guadalupe Barrera is walking the stage with a pretty impressive resume, especially when you consider to get here, she overcame a language barrier. Since she was in pre-K, Guadalupe Barrera has been a student in Bernie ISD. But when she first entered school, Spanish was the only language spoken in her home. Even though she wasn't as fluent in English as some of her classmates, Guadalupe didn't let it slow her down. She persisted and now speaks both languages comfortably. She then excelled in her schoolwork, earning numerous college credits while still in high school and involving herself with a variety of extracurricular activities. That list includes running cross country, managing the track team, being a leader for younger students in the district. As Guadalupe's high school career comes to a close, she looks back on the time with warm feelings. I'm really grateful for just all the memories that I've made so far. And I know that I'm really um, blessed because of uh, everything that's just happened in my life, everything that I've learned and everything that I will get to learn and just anything that I get to take part in. It's just such a blessing for me. Guadalupe plans to attend Texas A&M University Corpus Christi in the fall to pursue nursing. Keith Jeffcoat, Guadalupe's biology teacher, has a message for her soon to be professors. They need to be ready for an amazing young woman that um, has the utmost drive to be her best. Um, even when times are tough, um, she continues going, never complains, um, never, never shows a bad day, even though I know we all have bad days. A Guadalupe's teacher that we spoke to is actually a graduate of Texas A&M Corpus Christi. So you can imagine how excited he was when he learned Guadalupe will be an Islander. Steve Spreester. KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Steve, and congratulations, Guadalupe. Let's go ahead and take a look at your morning commute. 410 at San Pedro looks okay right now. We're not really seeing a lot of issues out there. There's 410 at Ingram. Traffic, though, is picking up. It is morning rush hour, so just expect to see some busy roads out there. But 410 at Evers looks pretty quiet. 281 at Grayson, we have a stalled vehicle, and that seems to have been the trending issue throughout the morning, as you can see right there in the northbound lanes. Uh, as we continue to take a jump around town, we'll have to drive over here to Loop 410 northbound. They're near I-10 on the east side of San Antonio. We are seeing a slowdown that is taking place. Traffic right now moving at 19 miles per hour. That's a usual trouble spot around this time, but we'll continue to watch it closely and always make sure you keep your eyes on the road. Uh, one last drive down over here. We have this stall that still remains off Loop 410 eastbound near Zazamora. That's been there for quite a while, so just remember to move over, slow down, and check your vehicles before you get out on the roadways. A wide look at the map doesn't really show a whole lot of issues out there, just those stalled vehicles, but it's likely we'll start to see slowdowns before the show wraps. But right Right now, as you can see on Transguide, some of that traffic is moving without any trouble, guys. Thank you, Stephen. It's no secret we love our furry critters yeah. here on GMSA. That's a good pick. Oh, look up happy in the dictionary, and I think we're going to see this picture. So. <laughs> just all we're missing is the soundtrack. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, he just smiling, just enjoying the water, and yeah, find a friend with a pool like that. And uh, thank you very much for the KSAT Connect picture. Just a great shot there. Yeah, pool, uh, pool, pond, anything. Lake is going to be good over the next couple of days, especially going into this weekend. Uh, lots of clouds hanging around here this morning, and we do have just a few light little sprinkly showers uh, scattered about you know, from east to west, but not really a lot of rain, obviously. Uh, just a few, again, light sprinkles enough to make the roads damp in places. We've got one or two of them maybe moving through town right now. A couple of more further off to the east. If you're going out 10, you may run into just one or two of those. Again, this is not going to amount to anything. Just a few damp spots on the roads. Temperatures will stay steady throughout the rest of the morning. That 10% chance about all we can muster as far as a chance for some rain this morning. Just those few sprinkly showers, some sunshine thrown in, but we're going to have more clouds than the past couple of days. Got a lot more moisture even upstairs in the atmosphere, which I think is going to help to keep some clouds around here. That will trim a few degrees off temperatures. So 88 at noon, then we make it up into the mid 90s later on today. 
It was 97 Monday, 99 yesterday, 96 today. Still five above normal, but we trim at least a couple of notches off temperatures and one or two of those showers may refire later on this afternoon. Again, very few and far between. You can probably count them on one hand. All right, today is the start of the tropical season for the next six months and we're still watching the leftovers of Agatha, which was there in the Pacific Ocean, moved across Central America, Southern uh, Mexico, Yucatan Peninsula, and it's reemerging into the Caribbean. And there is a decent chance that it's going to develop into what would be Alex, the first name storm of the Atlantic season, but that's going to continue to work its way off to the northeast, probably moving over Cuba in toward the southern portion of Florida. So that's not going to have any impact at all on our weather. Today, we are going to make it up to 88 degrees again at noon. A lot of clouds hanging around here today. Some sunshine obviously thrown in. A few sprinkles around this morning and then one or two showers later on this afternoon. Even a straight thunderstorm can't be ruled out, but don't get your hopes up for rain today. 96 for a high temperature and wind out of the south 10, 20 miles per hour. So still a breeze today. About the same thing the next couple of days. Very warm and humid in the morning, mid 90s in the afternoon, a stray shower or two. Then the heat gets cranked up. So the pooch in the pool, <laughs> that's where you will be finding. Yes. Uh -huh. Good idea. Fido. Fido had the right idea. Yep. 650, about 77 degrees. A reminder, KSAT 12 is your home for this year's NBA Finals. Eastern Conference champion, the Boston Celtics, will take on the Western Conference champ, Golden State Warriors. It all starts with Game 1 tomorrow night, 8 o'clock in San Francisco. That's 8 o'clock San Antonio time. Catch all the action right here, live on KSAT 12. And students at Boone Elementary School are going home this summer with brand new books. Today on GMSA at 9, we're going to tell you how these students raised enough money to buy books for their own school and for students at a neighboring campus. Some good kids making great things happen. Outside with live cam, pretty much normal song and dance routine for South Texas on a Wednesday morning to start the month of June. We'll wrap up GMSA after this break. We're live in Palm Beach County, Florida, and coming up on GMA, new details on the deadly school shooting rampage investigation. What authorities are now saying about the door the gunman used to get into that elementary school. Plus, what airfares are soaring this summer? The best times to book travel and the simple tricks that can save you money. And of course, we are live in London, less than 24 hours until the Queen's Jubilee with unprecedented access behind the scenes. And with very special message for the monarch, you'll only see right here on GMA. Coming up, stay with us. Can't wait for that. Well, right here at home, we are getting one last look at the roads. You can see traffic is still moving pretty lightly there, not really encountering any major issues. But as we get a wide look at the map, you can see that we do have some slowdowns to expect off of 410 on the east side. Uh, we'll bring you in there and show you right now traffic moving at just six miles per hour. So in those northbound lanes, we'll have to find out what's going on there before uh, the people get out on the roadway. But you can see right now we're starting to see that slowdown and a slowdown here not expected on the eastbound lanes of 410 at Zazamora. But we'll continue to watch the roads closely. Now let's check in with Mike Osterhage. Thank you very much, sir. And lots of clouds, a couple of uh, sprinkly showers around the area. Not a lot, as you can see, you almost have to squint to see everything. One or two of them have been trying to move on through town, so don't be surprised if you run into a light sprinkle. All it's going to do is really make the roads kind of damp. Temperatures are very warm, very humid. We're going to make it up to 96 today and maybe a shower this afternoon. Thank you, Mike. And thanks for joining us today. We'll see you back here at 9 a.m. Have a good day. Good Morning America is next.